What did I finish last week? I finished nothing. Have had no focus for reading. I, f I read a few chapters, maybe I don't know, several chapters of a book. Haven't finished anything, but I did manage to do some online shopping and I have uh, a couple of brand new glasses. This is one pair, the other pair coming soon. Hey Booktube, it's Kim at Middle of the Book March and this is my bookish week for Sunday, October 22nd. <sighs> I have to go back in time and look at my week and what dates did I put on all my documents at work. <laughs> That's the only way I know what date it is. So yeah, I've had no focus or energy for reading. Uh, yep, I've just been tired and relaxing and watching a lot of TV, watching a lot of TV. And today, it's I, I'm filming on Saturday. It's super rainy and dark here. It's only like two in the afternoon where I'm filming in New Hampshire. Um, and I just plan on the minute, sorry, the tripod's moving. The minute the camera goes off, I'm going to go take a nap. So maybe I'll have some uh, energy for reading later today. Feeling really good. Um, still, still working on fatigue and being tired. That's okay. It's normal, but generally feeling good. And we'll keep on going with this healing journey. So, so instead of talking about books that I may have read or all the books I didn't read, I have a book haul. So I thought I would put it in my bookish week because all I managed to do was buy books. Uh, yeah, and I thought I'd show you this little pile. I think I have like nine books here. Um, and I, this is not all from one week, but uh, for the most part, I've been buying books online. I actually did miss the bougie library sale I was hoping to go to and it was really disappointing but I was too tired. I didn't I couldn't drive and I just skipped it. So I so disappointed. But I think they have one in the spring and the fall so I am sure to get to the next one. However, there is another library sale next weekend in a local town next to me. I will for sure get to that one. Um so let me show you the book haul for books that I bought online. The first book is O Caledonia by Elspeth Parker. And this has an introduction, a new introduction by Maggie O'Farrell. I've, I've heard about this book for a really long time. This would have been perfect for Shorty September. It's just over 100 pages. No, it's not. I lied. It's about 185 pages. I don't know what I was looking at. So, um, O Caledonia by Elspeth Parker, and this is kind of a darkly humorous modern classic, kind of a gothic tale, um, a little bit of the, the blurb says, so um, Janet was found oddly attired in her mother's black lace evening dress, twisted and slumped in bloody murderous death. So that's all I needed to know. <laughs> Uh, in generally, it's basically about um, uh, wild and courageous Janet, fierce determination to remain steadfastly herself, unfor unforgettable protagonist in contemporary literature. It's kind of the ill-fated young heroine, uh, her life from birth to death, sibling bonds and betrayals, isolation and loneliness. I know several people, I've, I've, I can't place where, but have read this book or re reviewed it highly. So if you have, let me know in the comments. I forget, somebody told me, asked me if I've read this book and I said I never have. Um, and somebody said, you need to read it. So Looking for Mr. Goodbar by Judith Rosner. This is not a, <laughs> a new book by any means. This was published uh, in 1975 and pretty nice brand new copy. Um, this is a complex and chilling portrait of a woman's descent into hell. Uh, Teresa Dunn spends her days as a school teacher whose rigid Catholic upbringing has taught her that happiness means finding the right man, blah, blah, blah. But at night, her resentment of those social mores and fear of attachment lead her into the alcohol and drug-fueled underworld of singles bars. Uh, I'm not going to read any more because I've kind of, over the years, heard of this story, heard of this book. Um, so, yeah, glad to get my hands on that one. This one, um, let's see. 
this was a book that was published posthumously. This book was published in mm, 2022. This is Toad by Catherine Dunn. Catherine Dunn wrote the book Geek Love, which I read years ago and thought was so original. Um, I ha I, it's a book I want to reread. And this one just came out last year posthumously. She died in 2016. And this is about Sally Gunner has withdrawn from the world. She spends her days alone at home reading drugstore mysteries, polishing the doorknobs, waxing the floors. Her only companions are a vase of goldfish, a garden toad, and the door-to-door -door salesman who sells her cleaning supplies once a month. She broods over her deepest regrets, her blighted romances with self-important men, her lifelong struggle to feel at home in her own body, and her wayward early 20s when she was a fish out of water among a group of eccentric, privileged young people at a liberal arts college. Um, basically, self-deprecating, self sardonic, It's she's recounting her misadventures, and I read it because I saw it everywhere, and it's Catherine Dunn, and I was really interested in reading another one of her novels. I think, I think all of these are novels. Maybe not. Let me look. I don't remember if this one is or not. No, maybe, I don't remember. This one doesn't have novel on the front. Um, I don't know. That's not important. It's not important. What's the next one? Uh, what Strange Paradise by Omar el -Akkad. Um, he is the author of American War, and it's a powerful novel that looks at the global refugee crisis through the eyes of a child. I'm not normally a big fan of child narrators in books, but this one, um, really wanted to uh, read this one, get my hands on it. More bodies have washed up on the shores of a small island. Another overfilled, ill-equipped, dilapidated ship has sunk under the weight of its too many passengers. Syrians, Ethiopians, Egyptians, Lebanese, Palestinians, all of them desperate to escape untenable, untenable lives back in their homelands. But miraculously, someone has survived the passage. Nine-year-old Amir, a Syrian boy who is soon rescued by Vana. Vana is a teenage girl who, despite being native to the island, experiences her own sense of homelessness in a place and among the people she has come to disdain. And although Vana and Amir are complete strangers, though they don't speak a common language, Vana is determined to do whatever it takes to save the boy. I just read My Fourth Time We Drowned by Sally Hayden for the Book Two Prize in Nonfiction. And really didn't, it's not an enjoyable book to read, but really enjoyed my reading experience with that book. And we've all seen stories on the news of um, migration routes and tragedies that happened with people trying to escape uh, persecution or violence in their home countries, children um, being killed at sea and all of that. So this is very timely and um, really interesting topic for a novel. So I'm kind of interested to see how that's going to play out. This one is Seven Steeples by Sarah Baum, and this is, I think this was the one that I thought would be good for Shorty September. This is a eh, fairly short book. It's a stunning novel about a couple that moves with their dogs to the Irish countryside, and she is an Irish author. Britta, if you're watching, here's one to add to our list. Um, they immerse themselves in nature and attempt to disappear from society. The winter following the summer they meet, Belle and Cy move into a remote house on the Irish countryside with their dogs. Both solitary with misanthropic tendencies, they leave their conventional lives to build one another and to build another one embedded in a bit to I can talk. Both solitary with misanthropic tendencies, they leave their conventional lives to build another, one embedded in ritual and away from the friends and family from whom they've drifted. This kind of sounds like my dream life to me. Dogs and moving out into somewhere remote and distant in the Irish countryside. Yep, yep, bring that on. This is The World We Make by N.K. Jemisin. This is the second book after, after The City We Became, which I own and haven't read yet, but I don't care because it's N.K. Jemisin and she's brilliant. This is the second book um, talking about the city that never sleeps, New York City. 
And because I haven't read that book, I'm not going to talk about this, the plot of this one. But let's take a look at this cover. Holy coly, holy coly. What did I just say? The colors, it's so pretty. But it, I want to read um, the first book and find out about kind of the city that comes alive or has its own characters, if that makes sense. Uh, anybody who's read the first one will know. But I thought I'd pick this up because I got it at such a great bargain price. I, all of these books, all of these books were bargain books. So that means $5 or less. This one, this one I was surprised that I bought because I don't typically gravitate towards this type of book. But everybody that I know on Goodreads was saying either they loved it or wanted to read it. This is The Collected Regrets of Clover by Mickey Brammer. And another really, really nice cover. This is from the day she watched her kindergarten teacher drop dead during a dramatic reading of Peter Rabbit, Clover Brooks has felt a stronger connection with the dying than she has with the living. After the beloved grandfather who raised her dies alone while she is traveling, Clover becomes a death doula in New York City, dedicating her life to ushering people peacefully through their end of life process. And she spends so much time with the dying that she doesn't have a life of her own. Um, yeah, I thought I'd give it a shot and uh, take a chance on it. I think there's some people that I'm friends with on Goodreads that have read it and really enjoyed it. So, yeah, why not? This one, I wasn't sure if this is a memoir or not. I don't know if this is... I think it's a novel. I can't tell. Um... I think it is. And I almost bought this book for Mental Health May. This is The Octopus Man by Jasper Gibson. Uh, another really great cover. I love this cover. And this is Once an Outstanding Law Student, Tom is now lost in the machinery of the British mental health system, talking to a voice no one else can hear. The voice of Malamoc, the octopus god, sometimes loving, sometimes cruel, but always there to guide him through life. After a florid, I love that name, florid, psychotic break, the pressure builds for Tom to take part in, ex in an experimental drugs trial that promises to silence the voice forever. But no one, least of all Tom, is prepared for what happens when the octopus god is seriously threatened. And... I saw this during Mental Health May. I was tempted to buy it. I didn't at the time. It was still available when I was shopping online, so I, I took it. I took it. And the last one, I have seen this uh, in a bunch of different places. Again, I saw it months ago. Wasn't sure if I wanted to really pick it up. Wasn't sure if this was going to be a book for me. Um, so, but it was on sale at a great price, so I thought I'd I chance it. And it's a pretty big one. It's a pretty chunky one. Tomb of Sand by Gitan Jolly Shri. And it's translated by Daisy Rockwell. Translated, I'm not sure uh, where this author originates. Um, New Delhi, India. So this is translated by Daisy Rockwell. It's a playful, feminist, and utterly original epic about a family in northern India and the inimitable octogenarian matriarch at its heart. I don't really need to read any more. Feminist octogenarian matriarch. 80-year-old Ma slips into a deep depression after the death of her husband. Despite her family's cajoling, she refuses to leave her bed. Her responsible eldest son and dutiful daughter-in-law attend to her every need, while her favorite grandson, the cheerful and gregarious Sid, tries to lift her spirits with his guitar. But it is only after Sid's younger brother, serious son, a young man pathologically incapable of laughing, brings his grandmother a sparkling golden cane covered with butterflies that things begin to change. So... I notice that the light changes when I do this. I turn orange when I hold the book up. I don't know. That makes it a little easier. So yeah, Tomb of Sand by Gitan Jolly Shri. And that is it for my book haul. Nine books. Um, and the, again, they I didn't all buy them in one week. They've been, I've been stacking them up for a little while. thought I'd show them to you all. And let's, let's um, my goal is to finish some books this next week, shall I? 
I'm not sure. I'm going to try to put out a midweek video. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Actually, I'm not sure what the topic is yet, but I do have some bookish articles to talk about. So maybe I'll I'll bring one of those up and talk about that. There was one I found, and I don't even remember what the topic was. I found lately that I'm like, oh, I got to bring this on, on BookTube. <laughs> so we'll see what I do for Wednesday's video. But thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments below what you've thought about any of these books, if you've read any, uh, even if your opinions are, are negative or positive, no matter what. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody. <laughs>